Okay, we're focusing now on the King's speech. It will be the first that uh, His Majesty the King will be hosting in Parliament uh, and the first for Rishi Sunak before the next general election. But one topic not expected to be mentioned, despite growing pressure, is the banning of conversion therapy. Okay, uh, a ban was to be prioritised and some still believe it is the individual's right to choose if they want conversion therapy and a ban would compromise religious freedom. Okay, well, one such person on this is Gospel Church's Director of Affinity, and that is... Graham Nichols, who joins us now alongside Jane Ozan, who's the chair of the Ban Conversion Therapy Coalition. Good morning to you both. Um, Jane, if I can come to you first of all, if there are people who themselves would like to go through this therapy, or indeed there are people whose religious beliefs uh, require this, is it not right to leave the system as it is in place? Well, no, because we know that it's harmful. It ruins lives and it even costs lives. I ended up in hospital fighting for my life. I'd willingly consented uh, to go through this because I believed it was the right thing to do. But the mental torment and the anguish meant that I was uh, in hospital with my body literally breaking down under the strain. And I know that there are thousands of others like us. And that is why so many countries around the world have banned this. It's why the UN has asked for a ban in all countries, because they know that it causes such great damage, particularly to young LGBT people. Who are going through um, a, 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 a stage in their lives when they know that they're gay, but often they know that their religious or cultural communities won't accept that. And therefore, they are subjected to some pretty horrendous right. practices uh, from prayer through to, sadly, corrective rape. But even prayer can be extremely damaging when you know yeah. that you are being told that you but are Jane, I'm just amazed that we're even, we're even talking not, about this. And uh, I didn't know what your story was. And I want to come back uh, and, and ask you this. But um, I want to go to Graham. And I'm going to ask you both the same question. Graham, what is conversion therapy how would you describe it uh honestly i don't have a clue in the sense that uh what is proposed to be banned in in this possible law is something that i don't even recognize uh, i've never been involved in any coercive persuading people against their will uh to do something they don't want to do um but i do agree in conversion and people becoming christians and becoming a Christian changes your life and it changes your priorities and it changes uh, how you practice in all kinds of areas. You, you, um, believe, so you believe as a sometime, Christian, I mean, you believe that being gay, for instance, is a sin. I believe that actually practicing any sex outside of marriage is a sin. And I believe that not recognizing the gender you're born with is a sin. But that's my opinion as a religious person. And if people come to me and they want to practice what they, what what Christianity teaches, mm. then I want to encourage them to do that and pray for them to do that. But even more importantly, suppose my 14 year old daughter says I want to have a double mastectomy. I want the freedom to be able to say, I'm not sure this is a good idea. You, you transitioning at this point. And actually, the way that the, the ban is being constructed, it would ban those kind of consensual conversations between pastors okay. well, and members of their church. I was fascinated to hear that Jane has actually been through this. Know, Jane, so, Jane, let me t tell us why you went through this or who made you go through this. Well, I chose to go through it because everybody in my immediate community, my religious community, my family, I'm a strong Christian, I'm an evangelical, and I happen to be gay, uh, but believe that it was wrong and simple, as you've just heard Graham say. And so I, I was in my 20s. Most people are teenagers, they're children. And Graham's uh, um, example there of a double mycectomy at 14 is utterly ridiculous. That's scaremongering. That's not allowed. This is anything with a predetermined purpose. That is the uh, recommendation the definition by a group of international human rights experts chaired by Baroness Helena Kennedy Casey. Some of the top legal minds in the country have come together to advise the government that one of the best definitions to try and ensure that we only deal with a, a form of, of of, of practices, any practice that has a predetermined purpose to make you straight or to make you what we call cisgendered. And it's the mindset of the perpetrator, and you can hear it in Graham's mindset, that says that who you are is unacceptable wrong and you must change. And it's that pressure, particularly on children, that causes such great damage. 
I'm a Christian. I happen to believe differently to Graham, but I don't push people through it. And that's the problem that we have. Graham, you know, fundamentally, Christianity is about is about love. It's about treating people, um, you know, as you'd wish to be treated yourself. How do you square that with what you're hearing there from Jane about the people who have been led to the edge of, you know, taking their own lives on, in response to conversion therapy? Yeah, I, I don't want to take anyone to the edge of, of wanting to take their own lives. And I want to love people. I think the best way to love people is to tell them the truth, the truth about what God says. Um, I, I don't recognize anything that Jane has gone through. I would have not been involved in that way with Jane. But uh, just as she has the freedom to say, I think the Bible teaches this, and she differs from me, I want the freedom to say, I think the Bible teaches this. And this kind of a law and how it works out and how it's worked out in other countries has actually banned normal church practice, normal consensual conversations uh, between parents and between pastors and uh, children and adults. That's what's happened in Victoria, in Australia. That's where it has gone uh, in terms of there's even guidance to say you can pray this in church, but you can't pray this. Uh, you can say this in a sermon, but you can't say this. This is where it will go. And uh, I'm just asking for the freedom to be able to practice my own religion and to explain it to others. Mm. And of course, if I think something, is right, I'm going to persuade them to do that thing because I love them. It's because I love them. It's not because I don't love them. Uh, and Jane, presumably you can understand, you know, the, the sanctity of being able to practice your own religion. Do you think that is why the government shied away from putting that into the King's speech tomorrow? Well, there's two points. The, the freedom of expression, freedom of religion is only up to the point that it causes harm. And we have so much evidence now from the UN, from the medical profession, from the government itself, that shows that this causes deep harm. The government Jane, did it has only cause been harm to you? people like Graham. Jane, the, the did government it cause harm to you? And in what ways did it cause harm to you? Well, I nearly ended up uh, dying because my body was uh, packing down. But for others, they take their lives. The treasurer of my foundation had a 14-year-old daughter who took her life by suicide because she believed who she was was wrong. And that level of suicide, attempted suicide, is well documented. We know that nearly two-thirds of those who've been through conversion therapy attempt suicide. So this is really dangerous. It's not something that we should take lightly. And that is why so many countries now around the world um, from uh, Western countries to uh, Asian and Afri um, Latin American countries have banned this. The government has only been listening to perpetrators like Graham. They ha Grishy Sunak has never sat yeah. down with survivors. Kemi has only sat down once. Um, and they need to listen to survivors and hear their stories. Graham, uh, it's, I, I listen with regret to what, what, what Jane's saying there. I mean, I would describe myself as a Christian. I think Isabel would describe herself as a Christian. I think we could both sit here and feel no issue at all. What is the big deal about somebody being gay? Now, that may make you, you know, erupt in flames or whatever. But um, what is, why does it visibly bring you out in a rash? Uh, I'm doing neither of those things. I'd hate to be described as a perpetrator because I don't think I'm perpetrating anything. Uh, I think Jane's experience was was un, unusual and particular. Um, but there's no, there is no evidence of widespread harm being caused. This is just this has been debunked. There is no great weight of evidence internationally and certainly not in the UK of any of these harms. There really isn't. I've looked at the studies. Okay. Um, so I, I I think. Uh, Christianity, both traditionally um, and currently, uh, believes all sex outside marriage is wrong. Am I allowed to say that? Do I have the freedom to say that? Is there actually such a thing as sin? We believe it. There is. Am I? Uh, do I have the freedom to ex to express that? I am not persuading, coercing, hurting, or harming anyone. I'm trying to love them by okay. telling them the gospel. Look, I, just finally, you because. We are almost out of time, but I'm still not entirely clear, Graham, how you go about converting people. I know you say that you help people convert to Christianity and yeah. in that, presumably, they turn their back on their homosexuality if they are gay. But how do you help them do that? I mean, are we talking about prayers here? Because there are, I've read about people using uh, electric shocks and things like that. I mean, what does your own practice involve in terms of conversion therapy? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My own practice never, ever involves any kind of physical or, or kind of some emotional rituals or anything like that. Um, and I'm not trying to convert people from being gay. I'm trying to convert people 
to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. It may have consequences in their lives. It may have changes that happen. I don't try and persuade someone not to be gay. I accept. Do, does the Lord Jesus all, Christ, sorry, forgive me, forgive my ignorance. Does the Lord Jesus Christ say it is a sin and you will go to hell if you're gay? I'm, I'm just I'm curious. Jesus talks about hell more than more than anyone else in the Bible, and uh, he uh, authenticates biblical Christian marriage between a man and a woman for life. And uh, obviously we believe the rest of the Bible as well that clearly teaches that homosexuality is wrong. Jane, but I wish I had more time big, to, to get you involved, but we're out of time. Graham, really appreciate your explanation. Jane, thanks for telling us your story. And we're going to leave it now to the viewers and listeners to decide uh, what they think about all of this. So if they would just get in touch with us the usual way, mm. gbviews at gbnews.com.